So my name is Christine Frohnert. I'm an art conservator specializing in contemporary art and more specifically in time-based media art, which is a new specialty in art conservation and is concerned with artworks that have a fourth dimension that unfolds to the viewer over time, mediated to film, slide, video, software, mm. or the internet. <clears throat> So, and uh, I have a private practice together with my business partner, Reinhard Beek. So we are focusing on uh, the conservation of technology-based art, timeless media art. And I'm also teaching uh, at NYU where we launched the first program in the US adding the new specialty of time-based media conservation in 2018. Wow, great, thank you. Um, I thought we could begin by just talking about fine art conservation, just defining what it is for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. So art conservation is really focusing on the protection of and care of cultural heritage. And that includes artworks, that can include architecture, architecture monuments, um, archaeological sites, but we are really focusing on fine art conservation. And um, so this um, um, includes both um, active conservation treatments, but also preventive conservation in order to avoid any damages to happen in the first place. Yeah, so I thought we could maybe start with the worst case scenario of remediation and restoration and then move to prevention. Um, within that, what are the influencing factors of degradation? Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, the inf most um, important influencing factors of degradation for artworks are the surrounding climate. It, so the humidity and the temperature. Light is a very, very important factor, as well as solid or gaseous um, contaminants in the surrounding. Right. So <clears throat> uh, within that, um, different materials also have different requirements when it comes to the, um, yeah, the, the surrounding climate. And so it really needs to be determined by those um, um, demands. However, generally speaking, most artworks are best kept in a climate that is very, very close to the human comfort zone. Mm. And um, one thing that is also very important to avoid is you don't want to see any uh, fast changes in the climate. You don't want to expose an artwork to um, rapid changes from like 20 um, degrees in difference. So what happens is, imagine a painting that is on a um, canvas support. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the paint layer is added with acrylic. So when you expose an artwork to rapid changes in, um, um, in, in temperature and humidity, the canvas will expand and shrink. But right. the paint doesn't have the ability to follow that movement in the same, to the same degree. So what happens, cracks will occur over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes, I mean, that makes sense. One is a much more fluid and natural material. Yeah, and also um, influencing factors like contact materials um, during storage can also have an impact. So it's also very important to um, um, look at the materials that are used for wrapping during storage or for for transport as well. So there can also be gases in the in the surroundings that can have a, a huge impact on, on artworks as well. Hmm. So stability in regards to environment and uh, the type and the way in which artworks are handled and wrapped um, key yeah. key. So certainly think about uh, um, a work on paper, let's say a watercolor. 
uh, it's, it's very, very, very sensitive to um, light influence degradation. So certainly this should be um, only shown with limited light levels, of course, never ever being exposed to direct sunlight because it will just start to degrade um, fast. Or if you have a fireplace at your home, you may want to think about what you put right above it if you use it because it will just um, contaminate over time and, and, yeah. and will accumulate grime. So let's talk about when an artwork is unstable or damaged. Mm -hmm. um, unstable to the point that it needs restoration and damaged to the point that it needs uh, remediation. So um, I know from my side, what one should do is immediately notify your insurance company or broker. Mm -hmm. um, and then with that company, you'll outline uh, an initial assessment of the damage. Um, there are two types of damage, total loss and partial loss. Uh, I should say two types of classifications of damage. Mm -hmm. um, total loss, Total loss is when the damage of the work costs more to repair than the total value of the piece. And partial loss is when there is an element of the piece that has been damaged and a portion of the value has thus been affected, but the work can be restored. Um, so after whichever category is decided by the insurance company, um, then the conservator like yourself comes into play. Can you talk through what steps, um, if one has a damaged work, uh, you'll go through with them? Mm -hmm. So usually we would um, examine the artwork and would provide um, yeah, a um, condition report or an incident report stating um, the current um, condition in writing and in photography. And if we feel comfortable that a treatment plan can be um, determined just with the visual um, examination of the Please, we would make a recommendation and that is usually discussed with um, the insurance company and the appraiser and the client and agreed um, upon. Mm -hmm. So if we feel that further information is needed and visual examination is not sufficient to mm -hmm. uh, define the treatment plan, it may become necessary to um, provide further examination um, on our premises in a conservation lab. It may require assistance from um, conservation scientists as well if some materials need to be analyzed scientifically in order to uh, define which materials can be consequently introduced during the treatment. So it's really all dependent on the um, degree of damage and the materials involved and whether or not we can already draw a treatment plan with visual examination. Okay, and then once you have a treatment plan, mm -hmm. um, you will begin the process of restoring mm -hmm. the work. How long does that typically take? <laughs> well, <laughs> the answer is it depends. <laughs> so it um, it's it's really dependent on the uh, degree of damage. So let me just use an example of, let's say there's a little tear in a painting. So, um, and um, that usually can be fixed, but it's a time consuming process. So what we do is we apply thread by thread mending, tear mending. So we are really, and we are working under the microscope and we are really relieving the canvas and putting every thread together. And as you can imagine, uh, that takes a long time and you may, if a very, very experienced conservator may be able to work on oh, like a quarter of an inch in like two hours or so, but it's <laughs> really time consuming. And then once you're done with that, you have to um, add the fill that is really mimicking the topography of mm. the paint surrounding and then impainting it. So um, with, let's say, time-based media works, our work often is not so much um, 
um, well, most of our time is really used to um, dive deep into research when we are looking for, let's say, a component of an artwork that is at risk mm -hmm. due to technical obsolescence. Let's say an artwork that is dependent on CRT, cut ray tube technology, the old television sets that mm -hmm. is really part of the work. In that case, um, our ability to keep an artwork alive is really dependent on the ability of sourcing replacement components or replacement equipment, but also um, sourcing the knowledge and the technical skill set mm -hmm. to perform repair and services. Right. So in that case, our work is really research based and often our time, 95% of our time is really used to dive into deeper research. And then once we have defined it's a treatment plan, that's only five to 10%. So it really depends, um, depending okay. on um, the media category. Okay. So the more complex the media category, <laughs> the, law, the more complex the damage, the longer it will take. Yeah. Um, that's logical. <laughs> yeah. And maybe let me point out something that sounds like, ah, oh, that is not likely to create a serious damage, but something like a fingerprint can have a huge impact on, let's say, um, uh, um, monochrome white canvas. It's very, very, very hard to reduce a fingerprint from that surface without impacting the the sheen and the overall expression of the surface, but also without making it looking cleaner as the surrounding or a fingerprint um, on, let's say, a perfectly um, polished Donald Judd sculpture on a metal surface. Our skin is slightly acidic so our ph is 5.5 so the imprint will leave an impression if not immediately removed it will etch in over time and then it becomes irreversible so some things as simple as this can create a total loss maybe talk a little bit about those kind of conditions that's needed in more traditional materials mm -hmm. so yes um generally speaking most artworks more, most traditional artworks are best kept in climate conditions that are very very close to human comfort zone so um around um 71 72 73 degrees um fahrenheit 2021 20, celsius and the humidity should um stay around 50 percent minus plus five percent and again it's really important to avoid um fast fluctuations in both humidity and and temperature they're also interrelated mm. so um since materials will expand and, and contract to different um, degrees. Another important influencing factor is sunlight, and light as a whole. Mm. Uh, not so important for um, metal sculpture, but crucial for uh, a watercolor on paper or right. for photographs. So they should, for every artwork, it should be kept out of direct sunlight unless artistically intended and for those materials that are prone to um, light induced uh, degradation um, additional measures can um, be taken like um, uv absorbing um, framing and, and, and glass and, um, and the light levels can be kept to uh, a lower um, limit like for works on paper we generally look at something that is closer to five foot candles 50 lux for paintings we would look at something between 150 to maybe 300 lux so 15 mm -hmm. to 30 um, lux so it's really dependent on on uh, the materials and then there are contact materials that can have an impact to um, to on the artwork as well so if constantly exposed to an acidic material you will see uh, a, a change in the surface uh, pretty soon or if some um, gases uh, materials are in in in, in um, the surroundings that can also have a, an impact on on your artwork and so then 
those are the kind of more traditional materials. But since you also specialize in time-based media and even performance, can you speak a little bit about um, mm -hmm. basic kind of conservation of those mediums? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, our profession uh, of time-based media conservators well, um, has roughly built 20 years ago. So it's really the youngest uh, specialty within art conservation. And we have learned quite a bit from first understanding, oh yeah, there are some videotapes in our collection, so how do we preserve these and what do we do? Do they have a limited shelf life of seven years, usually in magnetic tape? So should they be migrated? And if so, should they be migrated? I remember we were asking ourselves 20 years ago, in an analog way, or should they be digitized? Yeah. If you copy something in an analog way, so let's say... Uh, uh, digibeta tape to digibeta, you have something that is called generation loss. It's like taking the Xerox of a Xerox. So the quality is gradually getting worse. If you digitize um, your, your videotape, of course, you move it into a different format from magnetic um, information into binary code. But ultimately, there was just no other way around it uh, other than really digitizing uh, content on, on, on magnetic tape. And now with more and more um, time-based media works entering the collection, it has become very important for conservators being involved at the time of acquisition. Uh, um, it's important to understand how an artwork should be installed. It's on, important to understand it work defining properties, what can mm. be changed, what cannot be changed. Imagine an artwork that is shown on some monitors but also projected. There are certain parameters in which this an iteration of this artwork can be successful or not so successful. It may require certain room specifications or um, sound panels or a certain room height. So we have to fully understand what the artwork is, how it was produced and how it can be shown moving forward. And this really requires a close dialogue with the artist and often an artist interview um, in front of the installed work to fully capture what we call the work defining properties right yeah i think um we've spoken about those interviews and i've actually thought they would be helpful for any type of uh new media yeah yeah i i, I totally agree and and uh, usually institutions are sending out questionnaires to understand how an artwork was produced but also understand what the deliverables will be that they're going to accept let's mm -hmm. say um born digital work so you want to know how the work was created what kind of software was used what what um, the settings were when the final project was um, exported. So we are usually asking for the artist's native file. So we want to receive the file that was created when the project was exported. And this um, file would be um, eventually um, migrated to a different format for exhibition purposes. But this is considered to be um, the um, the master. A good analogy would be going to the doctor every year for your annual checkup so that then you know, okay, I have this problem. And so you then can kind of slowly deal with whatever issues you might have and not have some sort of big issue in the future. Exactly. That's, okay. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, like, um, it's like your annual exam, really. Okay. So ideally... <clears throat> Um, it would be good to um, uh, reach out to a conservator or a collection care professional in the first place just for some um, general recommendation. It is definitely good advice to have a condition report being created for your artwork so you can monitor the health <laughs> of your artwork to go with your technology. Uh, and uh, this is also extremely helpful if you receive a loan request um, mm -hmm. moving forward in order to determine if your artwork is in a stable enough condition to be sent out on loan, but also to track the condition during 
transport? Um, a thing that I often do is I will ask the gallery to also ask the artist mm -hmm. um, or tell me themselves what advice they or the, the gallery or the artist has in regards to maintenance. Um, and then sometimes consult with a conservator as well. Thinking about maintenance does kind of lead into the moment of acquisition when maybe you're considering to buy something and you are curious about the longevity of the material. What, what are the basic conservation concerns that one should keep in mind? Mm -hmm. Um, often collectors um, reach out to us um, at the time of acquisition in order to um, provide an examination and also to create a condition report and draw some basic recommendations mm -hmm. um, moving forward or even give them some advice um, if the materials used are likely to degrade um, over time or if um, um, while well, the materials you use um, also really translate into certain conditions of um, having it been exhibited or stored over time mm -hmm. and when it comes to technology-based artworks so when it comes to time-based media um, artworks it is actually really crucial to have um, a conservator or a collection care professional being involved because um, it is really important to gain both the physical and intellectual property at the time of acquisition mm -hmm. and this includes that you understand how a more performative work should be performed so if it has a durational element and if some movement or sound or motion is involved we not only have to preserve the physical components and materials we also have to preserve the concept when someone acquires a work mm -hmm. and they're looking to get preventative instructions that they mm -hmm. can kind of search for conservators mm -hmm. yeah i would um start with a uh, uh, um, American Institute for Conservation um, website. Uh, a lot of resources are right there or point you to other resources. So since the recommendations really differ from material to material, but this is a place where you will find more information um, associated with um, the American Institute for Conservation website. It's also a conservation wiki, um, which contains more information about uh, materials. Um, mm -hmm. And um, this is also the place where you could find conservators in your area if, if further advice is, is needed. What are the essential elements of a condition report? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think most people understand what a condition report is, but from the point of conservation, what are the essential elements? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually we have... Um, the part that is just um, capturing or identifying what the artwork is, so uh, just unique identifier, the artist's name, the title, the year, the materials uh, used, um, the owner, the insurance value, and then there's a descriptive um, part that um, just yeah describes the materials involved or the functionality involved, if it's a technology-based work, and then um, we uh, usually describe um, the condition in writing but also there's a supplementing they're supplementing visuals which is basically an image of the artwork and here we are indicating if there's a paint loss or a scratch and then um, it's signed by the conservator and um, so these condition reports um, are um, updated on a, on a regular basis especially if the work has been transported um, for loan or changed location Last words, lasting suggestions that you'd like to mm -hmm. give to viewers? Yeah, maybe as we have seen much more um, fugitive materials entering the art world with modern and contemporary art as a whole and more materials and technologies being added as we speak. We also have to be mindful that some artworks are intended to change. Some artworks mm -hmm. are intended to accumulate patina. Some artworks are intended to 
be changed by the artist or some artworks are intended to degrade. And it's important to fully understand whether or not your artwork is, or if the, the, the change is, is, is part of the artwork that you purchased, or if a certain status of, of the materials and a certain condition of the materials should be um, permanent. So it's really important to understand what the intended life cycle of your artwork is going yeah. to be. Yeah. 